Hallelujah. Sabbath Shalom. Today is March 13, 2021. Very early Sabbath morning. Um, been kind of quiet here lately. Um, just being still. And um, some things that Abaya have been revealing over the past week or so is um, what our people need to know about what it truly means um, to be walking in truth so that you are not deceived. Um, what was revealed to me was walking in truth. There's a difference between walking in truth versus knowledge or an awareness of one's lineage. When you are truly walking in truth, um, it means that there is an application of the word in your life plus the production of fruit. What Yah showed me is walking in truth is not knowledge or the regurgitation of facts. But walking in truth, He showed me, is application plus the fruit of the Spirit. The application of his word, meaning you apply what you now know to be true. You apply it to your life. There's application of it in your life. You are now living it. Plus the production of fruit. Because if there is application of his word in your life, and, you're an apply, and you are applying it and you're living it out, the, the end result can only be the production of fruit, meaning you will begin to produce the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit will be evident in your life. And this is what is missing with many of our people. Many of our people um, have awakened from our stupor of not knowing who we are and not uh, um, the stupor of um, who we once were. We may have awakened to knowing that we are the blood descendants of those slaves that were on that transatlantic um slave ship we know that we are those people our ancestors ancestors we know were the ones who made the covenant we know that our you know the some of the customs that our people um adhere to so many of us are gravitating back towards the customs, the, the clothing that we think that they may have worn. Um, we're gravitating back to keeping traditions and the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, um, keeping um, feast days and beginning to, um, you know, wear things that we think that will make us outwardly holy um, where the head wraps and uh, the metries and, and the tassels and whatever else we believe is going to make us outwardly um, appear holy but what Abba Yah is show me um, is that those things do not matter um, 
if there is no application of his word in your life. He has shown me that if you know that you um, are the chosen people, if you know that you come from those people, your forefathers were the ones who made the covenant to obey all that Yah has said for them to do. Yet you walk in the same errors and walk in the same mistakes and do the same things that he hated. He says, what makes you any different? They knew that they were the children of Israel while they were offering their children as a sacrifice in the fire. They saw what Yah did unto the Egyptians and how he brought them out and bore them on eagles' wings and the mighty wonders and acts that he did and splitting the Red Sea and allowing them to walk through. They saw everything that he did, yet they still danced around the golden calf and said, this be the gods that brought us out of Egypt, even though they saw what he did. He said, you saw what I did, but yet and still they chose to walk forwardly before him. Yah has me working on a lesson now um, that has completely, I just give all praises be to Yah. He continues to reveal things to me that you can only understand with the spirit. When I said earlier in this message that walking in truth, there's a difference between walking in truth versus knowledge or the awareness of one's lineage. Walking in truth, he showed me, is application of his word plus the production of fruit. Knowledge of facts, having knowledge of facts, yet you are void of or without application of his word. He says that you are fruitless. I'm going to say this again. If you have knowledge of facts, yet you are void of the application of his word. You do not apply the word. You are not living the word that you know and preach and profess to be true. He says that knowledge of facts without application of the word is fruitless and those who bear no fruit will be gathered up at the end of the age of this harvest to be burnt thrown in the fire and burn if you do not possess the fruits of the spirit galatians chapter 5 verse 18 through 23 reads but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the penalty of breaking the law now the works of the flesh are clearly revealed, which are adultery, impurity, which is uncleanness, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry, witchcraft, enmity, fighting, jealousies, anger, rivalries, stubbornness, divisions and heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, meaning those who are still out in the world, and things like these, which I tell you beforehand, as I also said before, that the ones practicing such things not someone who is striving for perfection, striving for righteousness, living to the best of their ability a life that is set apart, but someone who is practicing 
This is a habit. This is something that you do on a regular basis. This is just how you live your life. That means these are the things that you apply. This is what you're applying to your life. This is what you're living out on a regular basis. It tells us in Galatians 5 verse 21 that those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faith, meekness, self-control. He says, against such things, there is no instruction. But those who belong to the Messiah, Yahusha, have crucified the flesh with its passions and its lusts. Let us therefore live by the Spirit, the Ruach, and surrender, and surrender to the Ruach, surrender to the Spirit. Then he says, let us not be a vain glory that ridicules one another. We're not supposed to ridicule one another and envying one another. Those that are doing these things, he has said, will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. If you are not applying the word of Yah, and there is no fruits of the spirit in your life, you have no love. You don't have any mercy. You have no joy. Joy is not happiness. Joy is being content despite the circumstances. Peace. You have no peace in your life. No patience. You, you have no loving kindness. You can only show kindness to those who are like you or those who you like. You have no goodness. Can't show goodness to others. Can't show mercy to others. But yet you want mercy. And faith. Your faith is what you stand on. Is what you are steadfast on. If you say that you are of the faith of our Mashiach, then you will live a life that he lived. You will follow his example. Again, walking in truth is not the same as knowledge or awareness of your lineage. When you're truly walking in truth, there's application of the word as written and the production of the fruits of the Spirit. It will be evident. This is how you will know those who belong to the true body of our Mashiach, Yahusha, is because you will see the fruits. He said you will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. All you need to do is look at the fruits, not look at the head wrap and look at the meat tree and to look at the tassels and look at how well they may teach lessons. Something that I'm just being led to say now is for Israel, please be careful. Please, with everything you have in you, please guard your eyes and guard your ears and guard your heart. There are so many false prophets that are in Israel. People that Yah did not call, people that he did not send, people who are teaching that need to sit down and stop teaching because they are void, void of the spirit. They're not being led by his spirit. They're saying things that he did not tell them to say. They're saying things that are not scriptural. There are many are being turned away from the truth of who our Mashiach 
Yahusha is truly who he truly is, who he was, and who he is, and who he is to come, who he will be. There are many who are teaching that he was not born of a virgin, but that he was, that Joseph is his father, an earthly man. Many are getting the immaculate conception mixed up with the virgin birth. These are two separate things. They have nothing to do with one another. Do not be led astray by people who are very crafty in their teaching and twist the scriptures to their own destruction. We see this happen all the time in Christianity with the Apostle Shaul. There, there's moles within the camp. There are people within the camp, even with the disciples who walk with Yahusha. There was one who was willing to betray him. There was someone who called himself a friend, sat at the same table, broke bread with him, kissed him on his forehead only to betray him. So... What Yah is leading me to say is to be careful. Yeshua HaMashiach, he said, do not be deceived. Let no man deceive you. That is my message this morning. Do not be deceived. We are at the end of the age. And he is going to reap those who have sown into him, those who are seeking him. Do not allow any man, I don't care how learned they may seem in this truth. Yah has opened my eyes to a lot of these popular, what would you consider popular um, Israelite ministries uh, and teachers who so many are gravitating towards and cannot see that the things that they're teaching are false. Their teachings are false. And I have not been released at this moment, even though I want to, to speak the names. I'm waiting on Yah to give me the say-so and then I will do it. But he has not led me to do that. But what I'm saying is for you to be careful. He is getting ready to begin exposing many who are in Israel who are false prophets. There are many who who may understand some truth and can teach very well. But they have no self-control. They haven't yielded to the Father. They don't know Yah. They may know facts. They may have knowledge and can teach the knowledge and the facts that they have. And But I, what I see with many in Israel is arrogance. They know facts. They have awareness of lineage and can teach. And I know because... I'm a master teacher in my craft. I'm an educator of 25 years and I'm not bragging, but I can teach my butt off in school. I, and that's, and I have many awards and accolades. And this is something when people's, when my name is said in any educational form, they know how I taught. This is the reason why I train teachers now. However, I give all praises be to Yah because this is a gift that he has given to me. And this gift has been, has transformed from the classroom to me being able to teach these lessons in a way where you're now able to understand them because of the gift that he has given to me, because I have yielded and submitted and humbled myself before him and realizing that is not by my power and my might, but, but by his power and his might, that I am able to do what he has called me to do. It is him you in me and speaking through me. And so what I want to say is game recognized game. I'm an educator. So I know when there are many 
in Israel who can educate. They can teach you. They can show you from beginning to ending all about Israel, who we are, you know, and they can go deep into how we're the chosen people. But where many people go off is the Mashiach. Some things, what y'all revealed to me this morning, as I was praying and prostrate myself before him at 6 a.m. this Sabbath morning, is that my people don't know me. Many of my people think they know me, but they don't know me. They have no understanding of me. They know about me, but they don't know me. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, knowledge of who Yah is, is understanding. You have understanding when you truly know who he is. To know him is to experience him. Not just regurgitation of facts, not just awareness of of things that may be true, awareness of lineage. But when you have true understanding of who Yah is, you know him. To truly know in the Hebrew means to experience. There are many in Israel, popular teachers. Again, can't, I cannot say the names because he's not allowing me to right now. I'm not going to. But there are many who can teach and teach well. They are very knowledgeable in the facts of who we are and have knowledge about a lot of things in scriptures, but they have not experienced Abba Yah. They have not experienced him. They don't know him intimately. When you begin to know Abba Yah intimately, this is when you enter into his presence, when you experience him, when you are dwelling in his presence, Emmanuel. When you know his secrets that he only reveal those things to those who truly have a heart after him. You he showed me this morning, and what rose up in my spirit as I was prostrated was that there are only some things that you're going to be able to understand by the spirit. I remember when I did my three day fast and, um, which he told me to do. And I was heard told that you're going, you're going to the next level. So immediately when you think going to the next level, you think I'm getting ready to go to the next level and no more knowledge. But this was spiritually what I got in my spirit this morning, praying before him prostrating was that spiritually, this is not about knowledge spiritually under having an understanding what rose up. And what I heard this morning was there's only going to be some things that you're going to understand by way of the Ruach, by the spirit. There are some things that you're only going to understand by having the Ruach, the spirit. In the Emmanuel teaching that I did last Sabbath, man, why is he mindful of man again? Man, Bereshit, in the beginning, in generations, 6-6, six, six, it represents the connection. The double wall represents the connection that man had in the beginning and one was removed after the fall of mankind. I will try to find that teaching and leave the link to that in the description so that you can see. 6-6 six, six represents the connection that man had when they dwelled. Adam, first man, dwelled in the presence of Abba Yah. He is mindful of us because... Man, what he showed me in that Emmanuel lesson means a seed or generation that continues to abide in the Father and the Son, the Aleph and the Mem, the water who is the Son, Yahusha. Man, Nun, Aleph, Mem, from, from right to left, Mem, Aleph, Nun, 
a seed or generation that continues to abide in the Aleph and Mem, the Father and the Son. We were a seed, a generation. Okay? Hallelujah. Genesis. In the beginning, Bereshit, generations. In the beginning, we were, before the fall of mankind, a seed or a generation that continued to abide in the uh, Aleph, the Ox, and the Mem, the water. We were a seed or a generation that continued to abide in the Father and the Son. We abided. We were created. They said, let us make mankind in our image and after our likeness. This is why he is mindful of us and he wants to dwell with us. But he needs for you to walk in spirit and truth because only those who walk in spirit and truth are able to dwell with him eternally in the heavenly tabernacle walking in truth is not the same as knowledge or awareness of your lineage walking in truth before i end this is application of the word plus the production of fruit do not be deceived. Allow no man to, to deceive you. Study to show thyself approve unto Yah, so that you will be a workman that will not be ashamed, but be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Test the spirit. Don't just listen to anyone. Test the spirit to see if it be of Yah. But you got to have the Ruach in order to be able to test, in order to be able to discern be not quick to listen to everybody because they say shalom or cain or they come out with a documentaries or they come out with teachings and then you you don't y'all show me <laughs> if you really want to okay i can't say it again i leave you with this if you are truly walking in truth stop saying you're walking in truth and you have not repented Walking in truth is not because I, I'm walking in truth because I know that we're Israel and I have knowledge of facts and I can teach facts about what I know and to be true in the Bible. If you're doing these things yet, you do not apply what you know, what you have studied, what you research, what you know to be true. And there is no production of the fruits of the spirit, but you actually have um, the works of the flesh is what people see in you you're committing adultery you're still fornicating you're still getting drunk you're still reveling okay you're still walking in envy and jealousy you're committing adultery you're walking in sexual immorality you're still watching porn you're still lusting all of these things if you're doing any of these things you may have knowledge or an awareness of your lineage but what you're applying in your life is the works of the flesh. Works of the flesh does not produce the fruits of the spirit. Let no man deceive you, Israel. Shalom, family. I'm tired of the ordinary that's deeper still. God, I'll see you. I'm tired of... I'm tired of the ordinary Show us what you desire I'm tired of the ordinary That's deeper still I'm tired of